for tuning in once again to Porch Talk. I'm here on my porch. I'm here with Fatima Love. And we are going to go into part two of the whole should we stay married to our own. So anyway, getting to Fatima, there was some things you, you wanted to add. Yeah. You go right ahead. All right, so I want to explain this whole thing about, like I said, I do express that we should love each other as well as love ourselves first. Like that's the first thing like in general is that you have to love yourself before you begin to love on other people and things like that whether it's other races other creeds all of that but I want to tell you my personal story myself honestly at a very young age I want to say when I was in maybe high school like maybe like ninth or tenth grade maybe even younger than that I had this set in my head that I was not gonna be with the black person that I was going to marry outside of my race and the reason being was because we would make some pretty babies because they would have some pretty hair because their hair wouldn't be thick and nappy and coarse like how mine was so I wanted to marry outside of my race because I did not or have kids outside of my race because I did not love myself I did not love how nappy my hair was how long it takes to blow dry it and do it I wasn't concerned about my skin color. I wasn't concerned about any of the awesome things that come with being a black person because like I said, once again, I was really young. But you guys have to pay attention to the fact that that's me basically hating myself and saying I need to marry somebody else or be with somebody else or procreate with somebody else outside of my race to make this ideal type of human being that I feel like I need to have because what I am is not good enough. So I want you guys to understand that a lot of the issues with marrying or having kids outside of your race is that because a lot of black people, and I don't know why people don't want to admit this, a lot of black people, like we cool, you know, we hip, but when it comes to being black, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? We cool and we fun when it comes to partying and dancing and we got innovative ideas and music. But when it comes to trying to get a job, when it comes to trying to move somewhere, when it comes to trying to start a business, when it comes to a lot of things, being black is hard. It's very hard. So a lot of people think that if they marry outside or, you know, they have kids that look like this, if you have kids that are lighter or fairer skinned, you know, say you're like chocolate or something like that, if you maybe have fairer skinned kids that their lives lives will be easier that it won't be as hard as yours because despite the fun and all the awesome things that come with being black there's still a lot of hard things that come with it and sometimes it seems like and actually not even sometimes let's keep it 100 people who are darker skinned they have a lot harder time getting jobs and respect and things like that versus people who are fair skinned so a lot of black people are like I'm a married this white person or I'm a married this Latino or somebody outside of my race because their life will be easier because they won't be as dark yeah, I mean, that's interesting that you would say that. I think that's a very good point. And I think we do need to focus on that, you know, I mean, because that's a very superficial reason to want to marry outside of your race. And, you know, I quite honestly, um, if for those who make the argument, well, you know, the black man doesn't treat us right or the, the, the black woman is too argumentative or whatever your argument may be, because we will all come up with reasons. You have to understand that marrying outside of your race is only hurting. It's not helping. So we need to find a way to work together and get some of these issues in order. However we would do that, however we're going to get organized, that's another talk for another day. I don't know. Maybe we would begin to hold, um, hold some kind of um, gatherings where we fellowship with one another. And, and you know, talk. You know, you can t communication it solves a lot of problems it really does and we can get through the root of the problem and people start being honest and I know it's hard you know being honest with oneself or with one another is kind of like going through a drug detox you know it's, it's, it's painful that, so nobody wants to do it so we rather put on masks and lie but we're not going to get to the issue and to the root of the problem if we are not honest okay so we can't um, get over past these hurdles if with being superficial we just cannot um, and, and that's the thing I mean think about it people talk about all day Let, let's get real and let's get into it as Tammy Roman would say you guys want to sit up and talk about reality TV and how Mona Scott makes us look bad and how she's tearing down the black community but if you really want to be honest what else would we do because if we were doing anything other than cooning and buffooning playing ball or anything like that we wouldn't be making any money 
You know what I mean? We it's like we playing the position because we know that's where we're gonna win. They want us playing ball. They want us acting a damn fool, and that's what we do. So Mona Scott is only capitalizing off what she knows what will work. They don't want to see us as CEOs and, and surgeons or anything, or, or lawyers, or um, we can name a ton of things. You know, like I said in the first video, Black Wall Street. That was destroyed. They don't want us to have nothing. They want us to own, to coon, to be cooning and buffooning. They want to belittle us. And for what reason? I don't know. Only they know. You know, I can I can assume all day, but I'm not. This this video is not about assumptions. It's only about what's real and facts. So you know, that's the thing, and we need to look at that. We need to be honest. Yeah, I mean, the, everybody. Do you do you want to live in a box? Do you want to stay living in a, do you want to have five kids and live in a, a two-bedroom apartment? You don't. Everybody, so you got other people that's going to do what they need to do to get where they at. Yeah, we got strippers. We, we doing all kind of crazy stuff. And there's people out here that live everyday, productive, normal lives. But to be mainstream, to be really making it out here and getting them coins, it's a lot of cooning and buffooning. And that's because we have to do what we have to do. So it's not just because we're ignorant. It's just we're playing a position. We're playing a role that we can fully utilize you know what I'm saying so I think we really need to look at that and we need to stop being I'm gonna tell y'all too this really needs to be addressed we need to stop tearing one another down on social media that is so crazy we do more time arguing about one another when I see something I don't like I just keep it moving period I don't comment on it unless it's something productive to comment about or something that really needs to be addressed I'm not gonna share it I'm not gonna comment on it I'm gonna keep it moving you guys are doing this disservice by attacking one another in these you know forms stop that stop that is there anything else that you would like to say I mean touching on the social media thing like I literally see posts all the time where it's like bashing black women or bashing black men and it's like only if I know this person like I went to high school with them or there's somebody that I actually personally know, do I actually be like, hey, so is this really how you feel? Or are you just posting this because you think it's funny and you get likes? Like, I actually made a video about this that people post ignorant stuff because ignorant stuff gets likes, comments, and shares. Not because they actually have those views about one another, about black people, about black men or women, but because people gonna comment, oh, oh, look what they posted, oh, because it gets attention. Ignorance gets attention and a lot of people like to spread that because social media, people get something from the attention, the likes, mm -hmm. the shares, the comments that they get on social media. So true. I'm gonna do a little test and show you. Uh, for example, I'm gonna do it like this. You know what? You guys really need to stop being negative on social media. It, it's We need to stop attacking one another. Y'all motherfuckers need to stop doing all of this bullshit on social media. Stop doing that shit. Now, which one was more entertaining? You see what I'm saying? I bet you y'all heart rate went up. You got to sound like, hell yeah, bitch. I feel you. You see, it's the ignorant shit that's going to make you, you know, share this video. Y'all don't want to hear no shit with sense. You don't want to hear nothing with sense. Matter of fact, I bet you a, a video with 20 swear words is going to get a share quicker than one with none. Okay? So the truth is, when we start admitting to ourselves that we love ignorance, or better, we love that ignorance shit, then we will get further ahead. So, I just had to prove that point to y'all. Anyway, enough said. Before we leave, is there anything else you would like to add, Fatima? Uh, just one more thing I want to say, and part of, like, um, far as being, like, black and, like, just investing back into ourselves, um, we have to remember, or I don't know if, if um, most of you guys know, but they look at black people as we are liquid money. Like there's literally statistics that says like a black person may get, say I get $500, and within that hour or two that whole $500 is gone. And I didn't reinvest it into, you know, say some investments or Roth IRAs, or did I reinvest it into my home. Statistics basically say I spend that money and most of these big companies and corporate situations are Owned and operated by people who are non-black. So we are 
outsourcing our funds, our hard earned money that we, you know, work our nine to five or we stripping or we selling drugs for and we're spending it with other people outside. Mm -hmm. So if we actually focus on we where we are putting our money, focus on creating our own businesses and creating our own, just like Dr. Umar said, mm -hmm. we can focus on building our own and and things will be so much different because they look at us as liquid money like black people can't hold no money they look at us as cash mm -hmm. we're not looked at as people and that's I think that's really the issue for the most part is why there's you know the whole systematic thing because I honestly in my opinion I feel like because they talk about black people have such a large buying power that we actually kind of fund our oppression to a certain extent how many of y'all despite the fact that Michael Jordan is black them sneakers is not cheap. If you would take a $200 pair of sneakers and invest that in a business, a, a, a stock portfolio, a Roth IRA, do you know how many people would, like how many black people have so much money right now just investing our money versus spending it on Louis Gucci Prada, which I'm not knocking nobody, everybody has their, you know, designers that they like, but if you're spending predominant of your money outside and you're not reinvesting in yourself and trying to you know have assets you're not you're not you're not doing anything for black people you're not doing anything for yourself you're just living you're just living honestly and that's so you're absolutely right I mean and if you think about it I think it doesn't help that a lot of um, people that a lot of us look up to um, they are flashy you know and I think that works in the plan as well I mean that could be a someone's watching this saying oh here we go with the conspiracy theories you know because people don't want to hear the truth so you know um anything that goes against your narrative is either going to be the devil or it's going to be this conspiracy i always say the devil doesn't really exist it's just a deflection for things we don't understand or want to hear so Correct. we call it the devil yeah. and so um you know the biggest devil is is really you and either you're gonna get yourself together or you're not i mean because we're all we all have God within us. We are all made in His image. God is in here. So, um, but you know that's another story, and y'all not ready for that either. So we're not gonna get into that. But anywho, if you have nothing else to say, I'm good. <laughs> I want to thank y'all again for tuning into Porch Talk. Make sure you comment down below. Push that red button name subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Rocky Road Productions LLC Porch Talk on Instagram, Facebook, Love Ebony. And make sure you check every week here. I'll be posting videos and follow Fatima at uh, Fatima Love at Peace Love and Artistry on Instagram as well as Facebook as well as YouTube and I post videos every week as also. So. Thank you. Thank you guys. See you later and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.